Pullman Police needs your help identifying three subjects from a fraternity break-in this weekend. Find out what you can do to help. And how to say, stay safe from a wild animal on the loose on the Palouse. Coming up next on Maroon News 8. From the Northwest Public Broadcasting Studios on the campus of Washington State University, this is Murrow News 8. Hello, I'm Maggie Tollison. And I'm Ethan Kramer. Welcome to Murrow News 8. We start tonight with a break-in on College Hill early Sunday morning. These three people broke into the, the Theta Chi Fraternity House on C Street. Pullman PD is looking to identify the three subjects shown on your screen and need your help. If you have any information to assist the uh, police in identifying these subjects, please email Officer Nathan Padurda at the email on your screen. Pullman Police needs your help in locating a silver Nissan Pathfinder which was involved in a hit and run, in a hit and run incident that occurred on Southeast Bishop Boulevard. The vehicle is missing a driver's side mirror and may have damage to the driver's side door. If you have any information about the vehicle, please contact Abby St. Andre at 509-334-0802. Pullman PD warned people over the weekend about a reoccurring telephone scam in which a caller claims to be Deputy Gordon demanding payment in order to avoid arrest. Police say that these are not legitimate calls and that if you have any reason to believe you may be facing arrest, please contact the appropriate law enforcement agency. Well, take a look at your screen. As a bull moose was spotted in Pullman, police are asking public to avoid professional Mall Boulevard in Southeast Bishop area. Police say the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife have been notified and they are also asking for people to not approach or follow the moose and give him plenty of space. The Pullman Moose Lodge is currently getting demolished. The demolition started on Friday. They are currently uh, pulling rubble from the basement level so that they are able to put in a parking lot. Paradise Street is currently being funneled into one lane during the construction process, which should be completed by this Friday. There is an important city council meeting tomorrow to discuss the issue with the city, Pullman, the, the city of Pullman's plan for downtown reconstruction. City officials are asking for citizens concerned about the issue to come and speak. The meeting is set for 7 p.m. at Pullman City Hall. One person was found dead after a plane crashed into a hill Sunday morning in Okanagan County. Multiple search parties were sent out to find the deceased victim. The crash is still under investigation. A fraud trial taking over national headlines begins today. Former President Donald Trump is in court fighting a $250 million fraud lawsuit that was filed against him. The former president is accused of misrep misrepresenting his net worth to the tune of a billion dollars. Trump says he plans to appear in court to fight for his name and reputation. A Pullman Starbucks location was torn apart today. When will it open again? Blue season is here and WCU offers resources for students. You don't need any money, but you do need a couple of things. Dad, they took over my bedroom. Come on, come on. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! Find her. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. Starbucks goers were in for a surprise today. The Safeway location was closed for remodeling. Starbucks will reopen October 8th after the remodel. 
Flu season is here, which means it is time to get your flu shot. WC will be giving out flu shots every Friday until November 3rd. Located in the lower level of the Cub, make sure you bring your Cougar card and insurance card and make sure you schedule your appointment online through the Cougar Health Service website. We've seen some nicer weather here over the weekend. What can we expect in the upcoming week, Austin? Yeah, thanks, Maggie. So we got a little bit of a tease of, you know, better weather earlier today. You saw a little bit of sun, temperatures heating up just a little bit. But unfortunately, as we move into the afternoon, weather said not so fast. Still temperatures in the 60s, but those clouds are rolling in as we move into the afternoon. Might even see some sprinkled rain showers throughout your afternoon here on Monday. Going to be a little bit windy as well. That's certainly part of what's bringing in those clouds 10 to 15 miles per hour for those winds. And as we take a look at tomorrow and the forecast for Tuesday, we're going to see a little bit of rain in the middle of the night around midnight to 5 a.m. So you probably won't be awake but there's going to be some sprinkled showers throughout the way and for the most part more of the same coming weather wise tomorrow temperatures in the 60s with a little bit of wind and those clouds as we take a look around the state of Washington here on Monday. You can tell it is raining throughout the entire state. A little bit warmer in the central part of the state, certainly cooler up there out west and sort of this rain is kind of moving east towards us and that's what we're going to get here tonight throughout the night. As we look at the five day forecast coming up this week, the good news is, is there is better weather coming ahead. It's going to warm up throughout the week. We're going to see some sun and by the time that next weekend rolls around, you see Friday and Saturday temperatures in the 70s, lots of sunshine so you can get back outside and have some fun times hopefully coming up next weekend. Back to you guys over at the desk. Thanks, Austin. Well, Maggie, it's exciting that we have uh, some warmer weather coming in later this week. Yeah, I was definitely enjoying the rain, but I think it'll be nice to get that sun and get maybe a couple more nice weekends before you know, it starts to really drop in the, in the weather, right? And the WCU volleyball team beats the, duck, beat the Ducks on Sunday. Stick around to see where they land in the polls. It was duck hunting season for the WC volleyball team this weekend as they traveled to Oregon and defeated OSU in a four set match three to one. WC volleyball team is now ranked number seven. The team had 13 blocks and nine aces. Iman Isanovich was killing the matchup with 14 kills and nine digs. And Magna Jalashva was named the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Week again. Also, keep a lookout towards the end of your Cougar sports for an outlook to find out when the volleyball team will play next along with other Cougar games. And more in WC Women's Sports, the WC soccer team was defeated Sunday afternoon as they played against UCLA. WC lost 2-0 with UCLA scoring in both half of the games. Now let's tackle some Cougar football. Although they had a bye week this past weekend, doesn't mean there wasn't any action for the WCU football team. 
they moved up in ranking to number 13, along with two players being highlighted. Cam Ward on Monday was named Pac-12 Conference Offensive Player of the Week and Earl Campbell Tyler Rose Award National Player of the Week, which recognizes the top offensive player in division who has who was born in Texas and or graduated from a Texas high school and or played in a Texas W in the Texas. WC kicker Dean Janikowski was also highlighted as he was named a semi-finalist for the 2023 William V. Campbell Trophy by the National Football Foundation and College Hall of Fame this past Wednesday. The award honors the top student who top student athlete who not only excels on the field but also academically. On the popular pregame college game day analyst Pat McAfee had a few comments about the Cougs. Second consecutive oh, game day appearance for Washington who State. <laughs> we got some in this flag. It's like Washington State's going, not big beans up there. Like, shut up, yeah. Washington State. I'm not sick of you. Uh, Waste of time on this show. Head coach Dick Dicker responded to those comments today in his Monday press conference. Defend our team. You know, I'm going to stand up for the team. I never took back what I said. I took back the absolute tone and how I said it. And they responded to it, and it's over. Let's let old Crimson fly in all our glory. Like, it's, let's let her fly. I, I mean that. Let's move on. Cougs, I feel the passion, and I, I love it. Let's pack geese a field for homecoming. We're not sold out yet. All right, let's show our passion and donate into the CAF and I, our NIL initiatives. And there's so many places to, to really put our passion. Right? So I'm excited about all that. And we're moving on and we're focused on UCLA. Now, if you take a look at your screen, you'll see this week's Cougar Sports Outlook, as promised. Although football and soccer are away, you could head on over to Boiler Gym later in the week to catch the volleyball team take on California and Stanford. Well, ESPN is trying to teach football to a younger audience. Find out how Disney and the NFL simplified the game. Did I pronounce all the names right? It's okay to be scared. Hmm? You don't have to be so strong. Strength? is not optional. This is my mother, my purpose. Real muscle is lifting her spirits between bedpans and bad news from doctors that doubt her strength. Strength is buried in bills, managing meds, and swallowing those moments of, Mom, it's me, your daughter. Remember, my strength is super, but I'm still human, right? Look who's here. There she is. How you feeling? If you're caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org slash caregiving for care guides and community or call 1-877-333-5885. Sunday, the Toy Story Fun Day football telecast was streamed on ESPN Plus and Disney Plus. It was the first time an NFL game was fully animated for the broadcast. The goal was to combine Toy Story and football to target both older generations and kids. Did you guys happen to watch any of the game? I did. It was uh, really cool. It, I mean, it's un pretty unbelievable that they were able to do that. And I heard it was they put like a little chip in their pads, which they were able to kind of track them and figure out what they did. I just think it's a really cool thing that they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's really cool to, you know, get the younger audience. I know, you know, the NFL is trying to develop that new generation of fans. And why not combine it with Toy Story? It seemed like they did a great job. And definitely a fun alternative to watching the game on the normal broadcast. Honestly, I wish that was a thing when I was a kid. That is the <laughs> cutest thing ever, like being able to see football animated as Toy Story. That's so cool. Yeah, it's really cool to see the, the new technology that's available. Yeah, really cool that ESPN was able to do that. But thank you so much for watching the show. If you missed any of the past broadcasts, you can find them on our YouTube channel. Have a great night.